All right, I want to talk a little bit about balance sheets and how I use them and how I use Google Sheets to manage the different balance sheets. If you're using something more professional like QuickBooks or some other app designed for balance sheets, it's probably going to be more complicated um, than what I've got. I try to do try and keep it pretty simple. So we have an overall arching plan in which part of it is the balance sheet. So just to kind of give you an overview, we have our short-term goal, our mid-term goal, and our long-term goal. So we're going to work on building up cash to potentially purchase or pool money with friends and family to buy properties and then look at transitioning those properties into more of a property management company, more of a passive income. Then once we get that established, we'll be able to automate and kind of expand and scale that process. At a high level, the very top of our plan includes just a kind of quick summary of where things are at financially as far as how they're broken down between our personal assets, um, our aviation business, and our real estate business, with also some emergency fund. The entire plan itself includes more than just the balance sheet. It includes the retirement plan, how we manage risk, asset protection, life insurance. The balance sheet is kind of a quick snapshot that's part of the overall plan, and then monitoring our net value over time. We also have a roadmap of the assets and things we plan to pay off or purchase. And that falls against the calendar based on the cash flow that we have each month. We also have a pretty good change log. So anytime the priorities change or something gets paid off, we'd make note of why the priorities change and why we're going to why we're doing that approach. And that helps us kind of look back and see what changes we've made in the past. Were they good decisions? Were they bad decisions? Um, what decisions help? What changes end up having a higher ROI? than others and keeping track of a change log for our plan helps us keep moving forward. So I'll start out by covering one of our simple balance sheets. And one of the things that I've always been confused about is why the balance is always zero. You would think that if you had some equity in the business or there had some cash saved up, then it would show a positive balance between your assets and liabilities. But then it was explained to me why it equals zero. So if you think about who this business owes money to. So this business holding the real estate properties owes money to mortgage companies, um, could potentially owe money to a credit card balance, and it also owes money to the existing owners, which would be the, my wife and I. So if we break that out and look at all the liabilities, we can see that there's about 835,000 due in mortgages. And there's about 70,500 that is owed to the owners of this company. So this holding company owes money to the owners. So if we were to sell all the properties, um, we would sell them for about 900,000, pay off all the mortgages, we would be left with, there would be $70,000, 500 left with this company. Well, that money is owed to the owners. So it is shown as a debt or a liability on the balance sheet for this property because that money will actually go to the owners. So if we go ahead and expand these out, we can see that this business itself actually has, um, has a checking account, um, emergency funds for the property properties. It has the current value or market value of the real estate. And then also list out each of the mortgages that are owed. So if we take um, all of our assets, uh, we, we sell all the houses, we take that money, we pay off the liabilities, then we're left with $70,500 that this company owes to the current owners. The next company that we're gonna look at is a little bit more simpler because this is our property management company. Our property management company is not gonna actually own or hold any assets. Um, it collects the 7% rent from each property. Um, once that money saves up a little bit into the checking account, we do a withdrawal for the owners. And so really for the property management company, the only thing we have is really the checking account, no assets, no liabilities. Um, basically we have the $500 cash, which would be owed to the owners of this business. Another example for a balance sheet is we have a aircraft leasing company. So under assets, um, we don't have anything in the checking account. We do have uh, one aircraft that's valued at $100,000, but we also have a loan against that aircraft. So we're still paying off um, $67,000 for this aircraft, but the there is no credit card balance. So if we were to sell the aircraft for $100,000, pay off the liability, the 
$7,000 loan, we would be left with <clears throat> $33,000. The actual um, skydiving side of the business has a few more assets and some of them are a little bit different. So we do have the cash account. We have spent some money to develop our own proprietary software. And also we have equipment, um, different types of um, parachutes for students, uh, rental use or tandem parachutes and non-tangible assets such as the brand name recognition, um, the high Google reviews, Google ratings, Facebook reviews. So those all play into a little bit of the monetary value <coughs> through the brand name. We also have a small inventory of t-shirts, hats, and memorabilia that we can sell. On the liability side, we still have, we do have some outstanding credit card balance. Um, we also have outstanding reservations. So when we collect money for a reservation and give out a gift certificate, we, that money is captured as a liability until it gets redeemed. And then we can remove that gift certificate, that amount from the liability section. We also have a business loan outstanding for the equipment. And um, so this is what allowed us to buy a lot of the different gear. And a lot of these numbers are different or changed from what our actual, um, just so we're not disclosing a lot of financial personal information. But this is about a good idea of what the balance sheet looks like and how it's used. So from this view, this allows us to say, okay, if we were to sell everything, we'd get about $54,000. Um, we would pay all of the liabilities of $36,000. In this company, the, the skydiving company would owe my wife and I, as the owners, the remaining seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars. So, if we look at the different um, owners' equities for each of these businesses, so we've got the seventeen thousand eight hundred, um, thirty-three thousand, property management five hundred, and then it's about seventy thousand five hundred for the real estate holding company. These all roll up into the personal balance sheet for my wife and I. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. If we look here under the assets for our personal balance sheet, we can see we have a certain amount of business equity. So if you look, these are the actual amounts that pull forward from the individual company's balance sheets. What I like about this is there's a um, function within Google Sheets called import range that allows you to look up the cell of another spreadsheet. So what I like is this aircraft holding company, this number, this 33,000, actually pulls directly from here. So if this number gets updated, so if something changes, let's say the uh, market for airplanes goes down a little bit and the airplane's now worth $90,000, that, that reduces the equity that's owed to us by 10,000. So now the owner's equity is 23,000. If we come back to the personal balance sheet, we can see that this has been updated also. Then the other thing, kind of going through these others, we have, let's say we'll have maybe an emergency fund, a um, certain amount into checking account, however many stocks, $3,000 in stocks. We also have um, our primary residence. So our primary residence will be listed on our personal balance sheet because it's not held within the rental company or the holding company real estate. And there's the value, about the value of that. We have two vehicles under our assets. Um, we both have retirement accounts that are counted under your assets on your balance sheet. And getting down to the liability section, we can see that we've got about 9,000 left to pay off on the CRV, about $7,000 in credit card balance. And then we also have a mortgage on our primary residence for $189,000. So that's the value of all of our assets and everything personally under the balance sheet. So what you'll notice is that even the balance sheet itself has a owner's equity line. This owner's equity line, since it's not, since this is not a company, it's not owed to anybody else. This is what would be left for us if we sold everything and paid off all the liabilities. So with that in mind, what's left, this will be the net value of the balance sheets or net value of our sales personally. And what I like to do, I track net value over time. Um, we started investing in real estate in about 2020, um, before the COVID. A lot of the market, a lot of the real estate values went up over the over the next two years, and then we also started seeing a decline in real estate values. The other thing I would like to show that I add to my balance sheet information is I I like to include the cash flow information 
in addition to the value information. So if we look at the business equity, I like to look and see how much cash flow is coming in from each business monthly on average. The main one that I want to look at is the cash flow for our rental properties. And so the reason I want to call this one out is because you would think if we've got the four or five rental properties, we would be generating more cash flow than $660 a month. So we're going to drill down back into, here's our balance sheet for the rental properties, the holding company, real estate holding company. And I've added a, a column um, of cash flow that I keep track of for each property. So the one that's sticking out is I'm coming down here. I see one is showing a negative cash flow of about $800, $900. So then to kind of drill that into more detail, I'll roll into, I'll go down into the, I've got a uh, tab specifically for the rental at 1548. So we can see that um, over the last uh, three, four months, we've been losing about $1,500 to $2,000 a month. And if we look over at the chart that we keep that I keep updated each month, we can see a giant sp spike in expenses over the last two to three months. So the reason this has happened is because we had we were renting out by the room, and so we, one room was generating a thousand dollars per month, but the other two rooms were vacant. So what we ended up doing, you can see we've got zero revenue in November, and we've also got about a fourteen thousand. Um, capital expenditure in November. This is when we took the house offline from as a rental, did a lot of work to renovate it, get it furnished, um, allow, make it a little bit better. And then the next month we started generating the 2,400 monthly revenue, um, getting two people renting two different rooms. And so we expect this to in, in continue improving. So what I like about this is it allows me to identify where some issues are at within the cash flow. Um, drill down into each individual property, and I can explain why things are not performing as well as they should, or it helps me make adjustments to continue improving the ROI. So that's just a quick overview of balance sheets and how we're using it to track our finances. We have the, the assets, the liabilities, um, and also the owner's equity. We also tie in a little bit of the cash flow. Normally, the cash flow statement would be separate from your balance sheet, but we find it more simple if we just tie it in all together into one statement.